comes provided the DPU gets
Oh yeah, mm, oh yeah, Hermes Trismegistus, and Poof Daddy, I don't know if you've heard Joe, but they is a little known saying that amongst the Hermeticists, you can travel to other worlds through what we call the booty hole as a form of fast travel essentially warp speed the way that you see mario going through them tunnels that's trans magic okay do you understand what i'm saying joe trismegistus what's up y'all hopefully we can live stream this other location as you have probably figured has a little bit of a, a issue with live stream but i think we've patched it enough to at least kind of do it so let's cross our fingers let's donate lots of crypto and bitcoin to make sure that we can basically just buy out comcast and then we can make this stuff run like it's supposed to run give me a bunch of bitcoin i'll buy i'll buy the internet i'll make the internet work because i'll just buy it if you give me money to buy it <laughs> uh we got some we got some fun things we're gonna talk about tonight and I apologize for not live streaming in so long. Um, believe me, I wanted to. And here we are. So let's let's hope it works. I had multiple uh, uh, tech bros out here. We had a tech bro from a foreign country that looked just like my priest, but like the 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 so-called ethnics version of him. And he was like, bro, you must do this and you will have the internet. And he was right. So shout out to him. Shout out to my boy. Healed the internet. We did some rituals and we healed the internet. We burned some sage. We burned some... Uh, burned some wood over here. And they got rid of the internet demons. So we're, we're hot. We're, we're piping hot. Look at that. We're up to 900. Uh... Yes, so Lord Voldemort was with Tucker, and uh, his plan was to do the fourth hour. So I don't, I don't think he made it back to Austin in time. But as you guys know, uh, usually I host the fourth hour, uh, but we didn't make it yesterday. All right, that's okay. Uh, if you gonna support the show, by the way, you can uh, do so via the super chat function. We're gonna get into some fun things tonight. We're gonna talk about the so too. Jamie said, what's so too? Me, 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 That's my wife, by the way. And I said, State of the Union. You don't follow Biden? How do you not know what so too is? Anyway, we're going to talk about that and the response. We'll look at some of the response videos, particularly uh, Colonel Douglas McGregor's response, which kind of hit on just the, ba the main basic issues, the problem with our country. Of course, we've had Colonel McGregor on this channel. We had a great interview, got a lot of views. Uh, he's been on Tucker many times, and we've had his son uh, Cameron on many times as well. So Cameron is the guy that does the um, Men in the City uh, uh, channel and the Men in the City Substack website. So uh, Cameron's a good buddy of ours, and, and we like his stuff. And we're going to be talking about, now we're not going to dive into every detail because Tristan and I, a.k.a. Lil Aids, uh, we will be doing a stream in the upcoming future covering in depth the new, we could call him the new Jeff Stein McEffrey, right? Poof Daddy. Or as the Brits say, Poof Da, Poof da Daddy. I don't know, if you, can you say that? I don't even know if you're allowed to say that. Everything is not allowed. But... Uh, we're going to be talking about all of the drama and the details coming out. And a lot of people have been talking about this for a long time. Cat Williams said it was going to be dropping. It was coming out. And here we are. People allegedly alleging that Diddy, it, P. Diddler, was somebody some may say. I mean, we got all kinds of options that we could go there. Um... I always felt like, because I used to listen to Mace and everybody, my senior year, everybody liked the Puff Daddy Mace song. 
And then suddenly he ran he ran away from P. Diddy like he was the devil to Jesus. And then Kanye runs away from these people to Jesus. And then Craig Mack, I didn't know about, apparently. Remember that rapper from the 90s, Craig Mack? He ran away from P. Diddy as well. Other people didn't run away and they just, they, they, they ended up in uh, some kind of way, <laughs> some kind of a bad way after P. Diddy. Like his wife, Kim Porter, and other odd situations. Remember Al B. Sure from the 90s? I forgot about that dude. Dude was uh, in the orbit of Diddy and ended up in a coma and came out of it and said, I'm not going to talk about it. And now the whole chat is just talking about nubs. So thank you, Jamie, for totally destroying my chat. She's in there laughing. This is all anybody's going to do. So this, this goes back to my Dawkins joke about a third of a PP, right? Because if evolution is the case, what species advantage was there to having an eighth of a PP? And then everybody started calling that a nub. So, okay, whatever. So that's good. Well, I'm glad. But see, y'all need to footnote your jokes because that's my joke. No joke stealing out here. I always identify when I steal jokes. Um, I'm just kidding, y'all. Thank you for those super chats. Appreciate that. Your Cat Williams imp impression is perfect, basically. Uh, thank you. Um, I'll read more of that. That's not the full super chat, but thank you. Yeah, I mean, the more uh, uh, you send, the more more money I'll have. I'll just buy the internet here and make it work. Okay. So we're going to talk about Suge Knight. We're going to talk about organized crime connections. Uh, my publisher actually has a book on this topic. So if you guys don't know, there's a great book on this called Drugs as a Weapon Against Us by John Potash. My publisher, Trine Day. I'm working on my third book. Yes. When you going to have a third book? I got a third book. You mean my fourth book? And then when people interview you, they're always like, uh, you have that uh, one book, Esther Hollywood. No, 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 bro. Four books. Four. Of course, meta narrative is the same stuff in the red book, but that's a long, that's a long story, Joe. That's a long story. Uh, we'll get into that though. We got some clips from Cat Williams on Joe Rogan. I mean, it's just getting crazy out here. So we got to cover all this. Candace Owen talking about orthodoxy. What? What? It's just what is going on? At the same time, by the way, as I finished up this book, and I'm about to do the part two. I might do the part two tonight. So for subscribers wondering where the part two of the Graziano. That sounds like a dish, right? A dish with too much cheese. Oh, the Graziano. Have you tried it, the Graziano? I sound like Watto from Fan Phantom Menace. Oh, Annie. Oh, have you tried the Graziano? Oh, Annie. <laughs> <clears throat> Religion and the History of the CIA. Uh, great book. A lot of gems. Didn't expect it to basically be a vindication of the Wim Hof book. But he went into all <coughs> kind of crazy territory. So if you're wondering, where's the port to? Because <clears throat> every time I do a book report, I do your homework for you. People say, where's the port to? Man, it takes me a little while. I got a lot going on. I can't just spit everything out in one day. Even though I did three podcasts the other day. Three podcasts in one day. It was exhausting. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> People say, quit coughing. Why are you coughing? Do you understand the allergy levels here max out? They're maxed out at like 11 here. I can't help it, man. It's not the Vatikouf anymore, I don't think. Anyway, so let's kick it off or we'll never get anywhere. With, <coughs> we're not going to kick it off with Poof Daddy. What do you like better? P. Diddler, <laughs> Poof Daddy, or Poof Daddy? Is there other options? <clears throat> By the way, that means <clears throat> I'm just I'm just clearing out the rap game. I'm the one in the background really helping to clear out the rap game to make way for me. Because I'm going to be the future of rap. And we all know that already because I've had multiple hit singles out already, which you can see on my channel. In the uh, cringe court music section. <clears throat> but let's see what <clears throat> Colonel Douglas McGregor's reaction was to our so to 
from Bobo, President Bobo. Let's see what he says. I would imagine this will be a you know quick to the point uh, thing. We'll react to it and see see what we think about this. Did you watch this thing? Uh, uh, Slow Boy said that Mark Dice said that it's basically just like a repeat, repeat and repeat, a repeat of the last State of the Union. Remember that State of the Union with like the dystopian backdrop with the red and the black and uh, Vader and you know it's like empire type stuff anyway let's see what uh Colonel McGregor says Americans I am Colonel Douglas, Douglas McGregor, McGregor combat, combat veteran, veteran and former senior, senior advisor to the Secretary of Defense under President, President Trump. Trump as Chief, Chief Executive, Executive Officer of our country our choice, choice I, want I want to respectfully present an alternative view of the State, State of the, of the Union, Union. The Constitution, our nation's guiding light, mandates that the government promote the general welfare, a charge that obligates Washington to secure the basic necessities of life, energy, food, and shelter. Regrettably, the current administration is failing to perform these tasks. The current administration claims the gross domestic product is booming, but much of it comes from government spending and employment. The government share of gross domestic product in the United States today is 42%, including federal, state, and local spending. This outrageous share is similar to what it was in the Soviet Union in the late 1980s before the collapse. Rampant inflation stemming from this government share of the economy makes it difficult for families to buy nutritious food. A dozen eggs, which could be bought for less than $1 in 2019, now ranges from 2 to $4 today with price increases of over 100%. In the same period, a median household income increased by a mere 9%. Now, this is uh, totally accurate. I mean, look, this is inflation. And what have we been telling you for a long time about the economic problems that were coming? In fact, Cameron McGregor, uh, Colonel Douglas McGregor's son, we've done multiple interviews in the last year discussing the economic hardships and what was coming. And we talked about... BTC, baby, <coughs> didn't we? <coughs> of course we did. Now, who listened? Who listened? Very few people listen, unfortunately, as I can decipher from the audience. Many of you did because you reached out and you mentioned it. What happened in the last year? Everything that we told you would happen in the last year. Now, this is not a financial channel. I do not give financial advice. Because every YouTuber says that. What did this do well it did exactly what we told you it would do in one year bitcoin was 20k i think the low point was 15 16 and we are now hitting all-time highs now yes btc will fluctuate but what was the key point that let everybody know that this was going to happen in my opinion if you listen to all the Michael, Michael Saylor interviews and lectures and talks, which I listened to countless hours in over the last two years, <clears throat> he was always stressing inflation. And that <clears throat> just from a practical standpoint, institutional investors, investors, corporations, individuals will be looking for places to have a refuge, uh, a, an escape valve, a store of value, not subject to fiat centralized money printing. <clears throat> and even though we learned this in 2017 and other people learned it even earlier, so everybody has their BTC stories. I had the, the dude that ran uh, the Bitcoin podcast, I forget the name of it. I mean, there's many, but <clears throat> in 2015 at the Secret Space Program conference, he had me on his podcast and he said, get a Bitcoin wallet and I'll give you, I think he said two. I'll give you two, a couple of Bitcoin. When Bitcoin was like, I don't know, 300 bucks, 200 bucks, maybe 100. I was like, a what? What is that? I don't know what you're talking about. So, there. Could have had uh, a free, what, 70 plus 7, $140, $140,000 free right there. And I, But I was an idiot. I was like, oh, what is, I don't understand what that is. <clears throat> now, if you look long here, <clears throat> At the, where's the all time? We can't see the all time. No, max. Here we go. 
it was obvious that this was going to happen, not just because of inflation, not just because of the money printing, not just because of COOF, all of those contributed, but also because of the debt, the insane debt system that our country has based its entire economy on. Fiat always goes to nothing. <clears throat> but if you look at cycles, and for those that don't know, Bitcoin goes in cycles, just like other markets go in cycles. And a lot of the cycle, not everything, but a lot of it has to do with the halving. That's the rewards that are paid to the miners for uh, being nodes and miners on the network and all that. <clears throat> and so the, that, that's cut in half. Every time it's cut in half, every four-year cycle, Bitcoin typically has a massive run-up. Now, what's crazy is that that's not all that's going on. We also have the ETFs. And I'm amazed at how many people don't know what this is, but this is boomer exposure to Bitcoin. Boomers don't know, is it in my email? How do I get the Bitcoins out of the computer? No, they don't know where it is. They don't understand it. It's stored on a ledger. It's math. It's numbers, basically. Okay, It's a way to store energy by representation through numbers and code. Nerd stuff. Don't worry about it. It works. Okay, Like your computer. You don't know how those, all, the, all the circuitries work in your computer, and yet it works. You don't sit around saying, them computers don't work. It ain't a thing. Where is it? Get the emails out of my computer. No, it doesn't work that way. <clears throat> but it was so obvious. Like It's so obvious when you understand what this is. Now, we had a lot of people fussing. I always get the same FUD. What happens when the internet goes out? Everything gets erased. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Please stop with the dumb statements. It doesn't get erased. So on my community tab, I shared a helpful video for you explaining that it doesn't get erased. But look, for all the haters, all the smack talkers, you know how many people told me it's going to zero. We have people coming in the Discord. Weird foreign women. I am an Europe, Eastern European financial expert and your Bitcoin is scam. I must talk you out of buying. You must buy the stonks. Remember that chick that came in the Discord like two years ago to try to convince everybody of stonks? What? Get out of here. You have booted me because you are a weak man. No. You just don't know what you're talking about. So the inflation, we all knew it was coming and it's way worse than Bobo says, who knows what it is, 10, 20%. It's crazy. That means that even corporations and companies and individuals realize that everybody's wealth is being drained every year by the rampant money printing, and it will never cease to drain. The government says 3%. No, it's not. It's way more than that. That's why eggs cost like freaking 50 bucks now or whatever eggs cost. I don't even know, but... There was no other escape valve because there's no other well, gold, gold. Yeah, okay. Okay, you're going to buy. What are you going to buy with gold? Nowhere accepts gold. Well, when everything collapses, we'll be able to use gold. It's, they didn't put all this in place to, just to take us back to Little House on the Prairie, dude. You're not going to be Michael Landon oiled up with, with suspenders chopping wood like your fantasy. Literally half of the women in this audience are right now fantasizing about Michael Landon chopping wood, oiled up and greasy, dripping and sweaty because they want to live on a prairie, Mormon, prairie muffin lifestyle. You're not going to get it. I'm fake ranting. That's not a real rant. We're not going to Little House on the Prairie. Klaus didn't. It. We will take you back to the little house on the prairie. You will eat the bugs and you will chop the wood like the Michael Landon in the little house on the prairie. And I will lord over you. I will fly around you in my uh, automated uh, 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 electronic head as you see in the movie Zardoz. Right? Klaus wants to fly around on a giant head like Zardoz being God over a bunch of little Mormon little house on the prairie muffins. Well, we're not going to little house on the prairie muffin, dummy. They didn't put all this in place to take us back to saloon times. We got dudes over here fantasizing. Oh, it's going to be like Homestead. 
and I'm gonna drive it. I'm gonna ride my horse into the town, and I'm gonna hit up the saloon and the f ladies of the evening. No, you're not. Highly unlikely that they put all this into place to destroy the entire internet and all of electrical society. What about EMPs? What There's not going to be one EMP that goes off, that turns off the entire Western hemisphere, Hemisphere's electricity. This is all just crazy, dude. This is the type of dumb thinking of over-conspiracy theorizing, which drives me crazy, which is precisely why I didn't buy Bitcoin in 2015. Oh, it's a conspiracy. They're going to track and trace it. I was just spouting conspiracy crap. And I already would have been multimillionaire had I just looked into it instead of being a conspiracy idiot. And I'm not saying everything that's a conspiracy is not. But a lot of it is. A lot of conspiracy nonsense. Like what I thought I knew about Bitcoin in 2014 when I said, oh, those old conspiracies, not a thing, blah, blah, blah. all this boomer fud. Okay, look, now now who's talking? Well, Bitcoin's going to go down again. Yeah, it's not going to go down. No, so we got boomer, boomer money's allocated. And it's allocated through the ETFs, which is not ideal. You should have your own Bitcoin. Custody it yourself and learn it. Go learn these things. But... Nobody wants to listen. Anyway, so we got a rant there. But who who was right? Who was right? Now, look, I'm just speculating here. I don't know what's going to happen. Now that we have these big entities buying consistently, it doesn't mean there won't be any volatility. But as Bitcoin gets accepted, there will be less and less volatility. So <clears throat> we may not ever go back down below. We may not ever have a new, like, so, like, look, what was the lows here back in these days? Okay, the low here was what, like, 2000s? 3,000, 3, okay, we got down to, like, 3,000. 3, so, we had our first big run up. I, I remember at the time I was buying Bitcoin, 2017. And I was like, this is crazy, $20,000, whoa, it's so crazy. Oh, crashes down to 3,000. But nobody knew even then we were, were kind of iffy, right? Because it was still, uh, you know, criminal money. Oh, Bitcoin's for criminals, like Elizabeth Warren says. Okay. Mm -hmm. it, fiat's not for criminals? Give me a break. Fiat is like the ultimate criminal money. Anyway, <clears throat> so then we get, uh, you know, some other bumps. And then we get halving comes out. Then we get this rush, this craziness, this euphoria, FOMO, right? Remember, everybody remembers this craziness. And, of course, it was going to crash again. So we got up to 68, and we went back down eventually to 16, I think, right? 15, 16, that was the new, the new low. So notice the low after this was, after this peak, the low became 3,000, 4,000. After this peak, the low became mm, 16. Uh, everybody's guessing. I have no idea. We can't... It's all speculation. I do think it's very likely we're going to see 15200 easy because we've already hit new ATH prior to the halving. That's unheard of. So I'm thinking 152, very likely, maybe even more. I mean, we might go to 300, 500. Who knows? I mean, eventually we're going to be at a million dollar Bitcoin. Absolutely. But that might be 10 years, right? Who knows? However, so what I'm saying here is that. People say, oh, it's going to crash again. It's not going to crash again down to 3,000. And it's very unlikely that we will even see, worst case scenario, we might see 16,000. But I, I doubt that. I'm thinking the new crash low will be, worst, worst scenario, 2530. Likely scenario, we'll probably crash to like 40. In other words, it's very likely, because people are figuring out what this is now, it's not as much of a speculative bet as it used to be. People are figuring out, oh, wait, this is actually like hard money. Whoa, right? They're, they're thinking, and they're realizing how valuable that will be. They're going to start thinking, okay, now maybe I shouldn't, uh, you know, randomly dump this. Now, I don't know, right? We, I don't think Michael Saylor is ever going to dump anything. Could BlackRock, you know, dump? Yeah, that's, that's possible. They might dump and speculate and buy back in. 
Anyway, the point is that uh, there's a very good chance that we'll never see $30,000 Bitcoin again. Very good chance. So am I telling you, oh, now is it? No, I wouldn't. <clears throat> you just don't know, right? Because we don't know. So that if this hits 150, we might go you know, back to 40, 50 as a crash. You see what I'm saying? But I mean, that's just speculation. We, we might not, we might not cry. We might just get continual buying. I mean, I think that's unlikely, but the ETFs are already doing this. And this is the reason that there's so much money coming into Bitcoin is because they are figuring out, that, oh, actually, this is better than gold. Uh, Peter Schiff was talking about how awesome and superior gold is. Dude, gold went up 7% in the last year versus Bitcoin was up 200%. <laughs> Come on. Um, Anyway, so so where where was everybody at? Where oh, where's all the? I don't hear any of the shit talkers now. Bitcoin gonna go to zero in January. <laughs> there was a dude messaging me. Bitcoin go to zero in January. Better get out. <laughs> You better get this dumb coin over here that's going to be the next Bitcoin. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, right. Sure. Okay. None of that happened. None of it. Anyway, you want to support the stream, you can do so via Super... Anyway, I, I didn't even mean to get into this, but Colonel McGregor's over here talking about the very thing that everybody's talking about this week. Well, he's talking about inflation, but everybody's thinking about Bitcoin now because Bitcoin's going crazy. And, uh, yeah, big vindications. I even had finance bros like a year ago. The real estate market totally outperformed Bitcoin. The <laughs> real estate, Bitcoin super low. Dude, what are you talking about? Where are y'all at now? Now, there's some situations where real estate outperformed Bitcoin. Like maybe you bought, you know, two or three years ago and you fixed it up and then, you know, people moved to Florida Right, and the houses, I mean, the houses that Jamie and I looked at uh, before Coof in Florida, uh, we looked at one that was 180K, which now those houses are like 600,000. That's crazy. So in that sense, okay, yeah, you got like exponential growth. But but the thing, I mean, just listen to Michael Saylor's talks about the superiority of Bitcoin even over real estate. I mean, real estate's really the only thing that competes and then maybe gold a little bit, but even that doesn't compete because dude, we're not going to the, it's not going to be, you're not going to go into the saloon and lay down a giant bag of gold nuggets to, you know, get the whiskey and the flucy for the night. Okay. It's not, we're not doing that. It's, this is dumb. High mortgage interest rates jumping from 2% to 7.5% in less than three years, places to dream of home ownership out of reach for too many Americans. Our national security is compromised. Unstable supply chains leave many store shelves empty. Our power plants and manufacturing facilities lack key spare parts. Ill-conceived domestic policies result in job losses and homelessness. The pursuit of misguided foreign military interventions has not only drained our resources, but also imperiled our hard-won energy independence subjecting Americans to rising fuel prices and foreign influence. Today, the government employs an estimated 2.87 million people. If we include federal contractors, this number balloons to between 12 and 25 million. All of these events occur against the backdrop of a national sovereign debt that has skyrocketed to 34 trillion. Even worse, we are currently adding another trillion dollars to national debt roughly every three months. It is impossible to drain the swamp with unsound money and a colossal debt that we cannot sustain. Tragically, DC Beltway politicians are controlled by the so-called donor class. This form of corruption is enabled by a cancerous central banking system. With privileged access to capital, this ruling class orchestrates endless wars enriching themselves and their cronies while sending our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines to serve in foreign lands of... What is this? This is Trump's pick for national security advisor. Uh, he's had us out. He invited us to come speak for, for 
or I went to Metropolitan Jonas Church to speak, and then we got to meet uh, with the Colonel McGregor and uh, 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 Jim Jotras and everybody. We had a great dinner, and uh, Cameron, his son. So again, I've had Cameron on the channel. So you guys should pay more attention to what we do over here. Marginal strategic interest to the United States. Meanwhile, open borders are allowing millions of illegals or migrants to flood into our country. This uncontrolled influx is straining our resources, overwhelming our communities, and destroying our prosperity. Reckless calls to defund and punish the police are crippling law enforcement. Officers are underfunded, undermanned, and unable to protect our citizens, making our So again, we had a really good interview, uh, what, maybe a year ago with Colonel Douglas McGregor, um, still on the channel, still basically all the analysis was pretty much correct. Um, here he's talking about defunding. I, I think I agree with Lord Voldemort here, though, that actually the long term goal is not defunding the boys in blue, but is actually to then replace the existing structure with woke people to run stuff. That's the actual plan. Um so that might be a little too conspiratorial for uh, public consumption, but that's what I think is going on. Cities unsafe for all, especially women, children, and the elderly. Open borders cannot be divorced from an explosion of criminality never before seen in the history of our country. The number of Americans dying from illegal drug or fentanyl overdose is over 100,000 each year, much of it trafficked through the wide open southern border. There are more than 26,000 homicides each year, according to the FBI crime statistics. This is likely an underaccount because in the last two years, more than 40% of police agencies did not report data because of a change in the system the FBI uses under political pressure. So uh, this is talking about altering the crime stats, right, to make it look better and to, to cover up for uh, Bobo's regime. <clears throat> And, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I can't help but think, so that, you know, there's two competing ideas here. One is this is just a bunch of incompetence and then things are breaking down because of systemic incompetence. I think at the level of the workers and people that are out there working, that is happening. We're getting a breakdown in, uh, you know, the infrastructure, a breakdown in uh, things running correctly, you know, people, even to the point of like food service is getting bad. Why is this happening? Well, because it's intentionally being destroyed. So it's true that at the level of a lot of working class and, and that kind of stuff, there's things that are breaking down that's not an, an intentional conspiracy. Not everybody's participating in a conspiracy. However, the other view is that this is all being done by design. So is it the Bobo regime that is just incompetent or do they serve higher level masters who actually want things to break down and get worse. A lot of the literature seems like the uh, elite technocratic class does want things to get worse because that actually furthers the implementation of the new system. So we've had, for example, who was it? That one dude, uh, I think CDC man, talking about the existing medical system or something. He mentioned um, sort of Re reversing and changing everything by letting the existing system, the exi existing system fall apart. Um, so which one is it? Uh, you know, I think both are true, but at different levels, if that makes sense. So that's why we're, we're, we're listening. I thought this would be more interesting. I'd rather hear his reaction to it than Bobo himself. Like just his, his, listen to, I can't listen to Joe Biden. I don't like, I don't know if, if people want to hear Joe Biden. I mean, that sounds like it's just gibberish, right? When he's talking. The number of missing children each year is estimated at over 800,000, which works out to be over 2,000 children every day. This alarming statistic is worsened by the overt sexualization of our children in public schools. Our children are our future. They should be protected, not exploited. Washington has also spent $14 trillion on various Middle East wars over the last 23 years in a series of self-defeating military interventions. More recently, Washington spent hundreds of billions of dollars on an unnecessary war with Russia, with little to show for it except 
higher prices for millions of Americans at the supermarket and the gas pump. Trillions were also wasted in the aftermath of the engineered COVID disaster. In well, this might be a little too red pill for <laughs> for the YouTube audience, but you get the idea. I will give you the uh, link right here if you want to go watch this. But you know what he says. You know where this is going. And remember, guys, if you would keep it, keep the discussion uh, YouTube friendly here. So uh, not everything is like you know applicable over here on YouTube. So doesn't promote hopelessness what are you talking about he's i don't know if he's going to be in politics but he might want maybe perhaps he wants to move into politics i don't know but how are you talking about hopelessness when we literally just talked about uh exiting the existing fiat money system as the escape valve of bitcoin so i mean a lot of people talk about hopelessness and you pure black pill hope no it's not at all you just if you click through and this is your first time here, then no, that's not that's not accurate at all. <clears throat> now, uh, a little more on that. We're, we're going to look at some other people's reactions. Um, you could go watch the rest of that video, but pretty much he's just talking about how worse things have been since Bobo. Uh, people said, I forgot about this trailer. And people were like, when is your TV show coming out? Dude, this is like... <laughs> Six, seven years ago. What do you mean? Was it? I just thought this. Tra I'd never seen this trailer. So, is there a hidden, more deeper meaning to the Hollywood films that we all love to watch? This is based on real stuff that the Pentagon works on. Brain computer. By the way, I realized too. I didn't even realize that when I said that. I that was improper grammar. Is there a hidden, more deeper? Well, what the heck was I saying? More deeper. And you're wondering, Jay. We know that you are a wordsmith. We know that your word smithery skills are next level. Why would you ever say more deeper? Well, <clears throat> because every one of these episodes that we filmed, we filmed from seven in the morning until six at night. No, eight in the morning. Eight in the morning, I had to get up at seven, six, seven, then, and then we filmed all day long for uh, a week. And then the next half of the season, another week. So, I was kind of out of it, so I'm, I'm embarrassed I said more deeper. I'm like, what? More deeper? Is like there a idiot. hidden, more deeper meaning to the Hollywood films that we all love? By the way, I was car bloated back in them days, but I still looked okay. What do you think? You know who I look like right there? I look like Ivan right there. Okay, guys, what is up? Putting the button, clicking the button, and we are live. Only black coffee, no milk. Bitcoin is all time high. Guys, what is up? I'm looking like Ivan right there. What do you think? And I slimmed down props to little aids, aka Tristan, because of the carnivore diet. So shout out to Tristan for saving my guts literally through the carnivore diet. But yeah, back in them days, you know, I had a little more carb going on. I didn't know. I was like, what? Because everything I try, I couldn't get rid of the carbs. And I couldn't heal my guts. But for those that are curious, we did a whole season of a TV show right here. And you can watch it on, uh, you could go to Amazon and you can see it. But you have to subscribe to the uh, we the free trial. Oh, yes, guys, clicking the button. Thank you. I do a good, uh, that is, Bitcoin Webby Pump. I do a good Ivan. A little AIDS slim you down. Yeah, I got AIDS from Tristan, and it slimmed, it slimmed me down quite a bit. <laughs> hey, dude, let me get a little bit of AIDS. I'm going to drop about 30, 40 pounds. <clears throat> I didn't look homeless. Yeah, long hair isn't homeless, bro. You think, I, you ever seen a homeless man with arms like that? How homeless is that? Homeless men have to scrub around for cans of soup. They don't have guns like that homeless man do we have like is this audience all boomers they don't they think long hair means you're homeless look at that guy he's got long hair ha! is he homeless <laughs> don't quit your day job <laughs> how come you didn't get bitcoin boomer where's that bitcoin in my computer is it in the email systems how do we get it out anyway if you sign up on amazon you can also watch Hollywood Decoded, but you sign up for Gaia as a through Amazon for a week trial. 
You can go watch my whole show in one week is what I'm trying to tell you. We did Matrix, Terminator, Kubrick, Leo. I'm the king of the world. I'm Batman. Right? Uh, uh, Christian Bale's whispering every scene Batman. We did Chinatown with Jack Nicholson, Blade Runner. I forgot all these. X Falls. These are pretty awesome episodes. By the way, somebody said when I was listing out best TV shows ever, I was honored and humbled because somebody said, your show, Hollywood Decoded, is one of my favorites of all time. Awesome, bro. We got Lord of the Rings, two episodes. Inception, Interstellar, Star Wars. I don't remember the Star Wars one. Vaguely. Mimsy, because we were filming nonstop. So it all blended. In my head, this all blends together. And then one day I went and I had on, this is a funny story, I had the wrong color uh, sport coat on. I forgot to wear the right color. And they were like, you can't wear this on screen. It won't work with the background. So, oh, we did Twin Peaks. Eyes Wide Shut. By the way, we there's actually like three more episodes that we filmed that they never aired because they said they were too dark. I thought they were some of the good ones. I know we did uh, Ridley Scott's Alien. And I think we did uh, Ninth Gate, but they saw these are too dark. So there's three episodes that are just sitting on somebody's computer somewhere. Guy. Anyway, I, I had the wrong sport coat on, and they said you got to change your sport coat. And they were like, and your pants, because your pants are the wrong color too. Because <laughs> some of the scenes show us sitting across from each other, right? Like. See, yeah, you see us, you see us sitting there like that, right? In the director's chairs, and uh, they were like, "You got, you got to have a whole different outfit on." So there was no suits that fit me, not because of being car bloated, just and so I guess whose suit I had to wear. <laughs> Did I have to wear that suit. So, anyway, uh, my time consciousness got shifted into zone theory, a uh, uh, 45 dimensional, um, you know, Atlantean Pleiadian consciousness to the third uh, degree when I was wearing David Wilcox suit. But anyway. How the world really works. Your eyes are wide shut. I can show it to you, you still won't believe it. Oh. Anyway. So, uh, did I put the link in the chat? I meant to put the link in there. I think I did, didn't I? Uh, anyway, if you do want to watch Hollywood Decoded, you can sign up through Amazon. It's a pretty good show. I mean, I'm proud of it. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, next up, uh, we're not going to we're not going to do Candace yet. Uh, no, not this. Biden. No, not this. Here we go. Um, so I want to hear a little bit of what Tucker and Lord V said. Let's see what their reaction was. I'd rather watch their reaction than uh, freaking Bobo's talk. So basically, we're watching the reaction, the reaction, the reaction. Yeah, and everybody asked me, what was you on Gaia? What was you on Gaia? So Gaia is like, the way that works is that a, a network buys a show. Jay, did you ever watch the movie Chocolat? Bro, I'm in the movie Chocolat. I'm in that movie. Just kidding. Um, thank you guys for those super chats, by the way. So, basically, Jay Wiedner's company, which he named after Kubrick, he called it Cubed Brick, uh, he paid for the show. And then what happens is the way TV shows work is you, you film either a pilot or you get uh, the network to buy the show. So the networks buy shows from studios or from production companies. So people don't know how this works. So that's why it wasn't, oh, you were an employee of Gaia. No, Gaia buys the show from 
Jay Wiener, and then runs it. They did not buy season two. Hence why there was never a season two of Esther Hollywood. I mean, Hollywood decoded, even though we did actually write out a whole, like, you know, took forever to write out a whole season two. Anyway, so that's how that works. No, I don't speak Russian. I took Spanish in high school and then I took German. I did get pretty good at German. Though. I got good grades in German. But that was a long time ago, so I've forgotten a lot of my German. Do you think of Joe Biden as a doddering old man, a guy who can't remember when his son died or when he served as vice president? And of course, that's exactly who he is, and it's on display every day. But Joe Biden is also a cruel and vicious demagogue, a man who has no problem at all denouncing his fellow Americans or putting his political opponents in prison, as he has done. And that was all on display tonight. That was possibly the darkest, most un-American speech ever given by an American president. In fact, it wasn't a speech. It was a rant entirely lacking in decency or generosity to his fellow Americans. In Joe Biden's very first sentence, he compared Donald Trump to Adolf Hitler. He did not describe Trump as the other party's candidate, which he is, a political opponent in a country that's had peaceful elections for 200 really i'm a crazy joe sleepy joe gonna compare me to tiny mustache man really this is wonderful if you think about it, everything's great and wonderful crazy joe what you doing uh, oh i'm a really 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 it was much better than joe <clears throat> If you, the, I, I can't believe I never learned that the secret to the Trump impression is the square lips. And if you watch Shane Gillis, who does the best Trump, like that's what he does, right? So, but comparing Trump to Tiny Mustache Man, I mean, that's just so preposterous. But see, the left just relies on people having no familiarity with, his, with, with history, right? I mean, I'm pretty sure Donald Trump is a huge fan of uh, our Woody Allen friends, Woody Allen, we love Trump, right? So this idea that uh, is just crazy. No. According, According to Joe Biden, Biden, Donald Trump is Adolf Hitler. He is an existential threat to freedom and democracy. <laughs> if he wins, you will die and so will your country. country. That was the first, first sentence, sentence, but that, that was, was really good. <clears throat> Dana Carvey does a good Joe Biden. I can't do Joe Biden. I don't know why. I do a pretty good Trump. My Trump is, it's okay. I mean, I'm going to try to work on it and get it better. Um, but I don't think anybody can beat Shane Gillis's, uh Trump. But Dana Carvey does a funny... He probably does the best Biden I've heard. But Biden is a weird one because it's so... It's not really distinct. You know what I mean? Let's see. Let's hear Dana Carvey's Biden. Everyone's crazy, crazy for the border. The border. Mm -hmm. so, so I did Biden, Biden three, three years, years ago. ago he's at a press conference, you know. Mr. President, uh, do you have any idea of how you're going to handle the crisis at the border? And Biden's like, first of all, let's get our facts straight. There's no crisis at the border. Come on. And he goes, how do you know, sir? He goes, because it says so on the piece of paper. Come on. It says on the paper. <laughs> This is a paper right there. And then recently, everyone wants to close the border. Everyone's screaming. Biden's up there. I'll close the border harder than anyone's ever closed the border. I know how to close borders. Come on, Jack. And the press is like, but last time, get your facts straight. I'll beat you the hell out of you. Will your dog pays the pony's shoulder? Come on. Let's do some push-ups. I'll close the border like nobody's ever closed it. The border, the border patrol, the border, border can't believe it's not butter. <laughs> Last time he mentioned the United States at all, for paragraphs and paragraphs, Biden quickly explained that actually his top priority has nothing to do with America. His top priority is sending billions more to Ukraine. A foreign war in Eastern Europe, a war across the world that has nothing to do with the United States, that the United States is not obligated by any treaty to join. Of course, Ukraine is not a member of NATO. A war that can only hurt this country and already has heard it in grave and permanent ways. The invasion of Ukraine is the most important thing to Joe Biden. Not ending the invasion of our own country by drug cartels, which control huge swaths of the Southern United States at this point. Not our degrading economy you experience every day. Not our collapsing schools, schools where kids can't read at all. Not the 100,000 fentanyl deaths every year. Not the declining life expectancy that is obvious if you look around. Collapsing public health an epidemic of suicide and murder, things that hurt Americans, ghost armies of drug addicts living on the streets. 
right outside the chamber where the speech was given tonight. None of that matters. Biden's top priority is aid for Ukraine. It was deranged. You watch this, you thought, this is insane. Does anyone in the room think it's insane? They must. Here's how the... My favorite thing of all this is when Zelensky, remember when Zelensky gave that speech and he was like, uh, BlackRock, all of you guys come to Ukraine, much to buy here, many money, money is to be made by giving to all the Ukraine, help us, uh, we love you, BlackRock, come here, get things. Republican Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson of Louisiana, newly elected, the man who leads Republicans, in fact, the top elected Republican in the United States of America. Here's how he responded as Joe Biden told the country that the invasion of Ukraine is his top priority. Watch this. Overseas, Putin of Russia is on the march, invading Ukraine and sowing chaos throughout Europe and beyond. If anybody in this room thinks Putin will stop at Ukraine, I assure you he will not. But Ukraine, Ukraine can stop Putin. Ukraine can stop Putin if we stand with Ukraine and provide the weapons that needs to defend itself. My message to President Putin, I've known for a long time, is simple. We will not walk away. We will not bow down. I will not bow down. Whoa! <laughs> this is crazy talk. There's no explanation of what the goal is here. There's I will not bow down. Light. Ukraine can stop Russia. No, it can't. This is going on for over... I will not bow down? What? Oh, like... Like submitting to Putin, I will I will not bow down to him. Like he's making people bow down. I mean bizarre language. Two years. NATO was stronger than ever. No, it's not. NATO is on its way to collapse, as is the economy of Western Europe. For not one sentence did Joe Biden explain what the goal of this exercise is, when we'll know we've won, and what the future should look like. Again, it was crazy talk. And yet, Mike Johnson, the Republican Speaker of the House, nodded gravely. Oh, of course, he is completely on board with Joe Biden on this Biden's signature issue. And that's not a guess. At Dude, all these Republicans, and they're all just compromised. Come on. Like, we're starting to notice, like, Jeff Stein McEffrey. Dude, Poof Daddy was doing the same operation as Jeff Stein McEffrey. So, like, they figured this out. In fact, in the 1990s, <clears throat> so Puff Daddy was talking to, <clears throat> we'll talk about a little bit of this here, <clears throat> but we're mainly going to talk about that with Tristan. So I'm going to cover some of that with Diddy. 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 P. Diddy. Diddy. P. Diddy. Poof. Diddy. He in the 90s had figured this stuff out. You got to give him some credit for being cunning, dude. <clears throat> because his interns, when he started his record company and he was trying to run, you know, Bad Boy and all that stuff, uh, uh, Diddy said, that the interns came to him and they were like, we've got to find the up and coming rap talent and the R&B talent. And Diddy said, no, you do not, you dummies. You have it all backwards. And I said, what? He said, we do not want talent here. We want untalented people because he said the talent eventually figures out, I'm pretty good at this. So I can do my thing. And then they say, screw you. And they go off and do their own thing. You can't control the people that actually have talent and that know it. Then he says, we want untalented people that we create as stars, manufactured fake stars, because they know forever and ever and ever that you're the one that made them famous, and so you can be their handler. He figured that out in the 90s. Now, what does that say for not just 
rap and R&B or whatever. What does that say for the other music genres? You're like, how come music sucks? How come all these bands are garbage? This is why. Because the older system it was intentionally this way for control. <clears throat> now, you say, well, that, that's not a conspiracy theory. That's just money and power. Yeah, <clears throat> that's one layer and level of it. And there's an even higher level, which is intent, interested in social engineering. Both of those things can be true at the same time. As of this afternoon, Mike Johnson is secretly supporting Biden's agenda, sending another $60 billion to the oligarchs in Ukraine. Johnson plans to let Democrats onto the floor of the House to vote for this. This is a stealthy procedural move designed to shield him and other $60 billion dollars did it. But that to the Ukraine. Can you think of this? We could have $60 billion worth of Trump. Toto Charles, we could have another, we could have another golden Trump casino for sixty billion dollars. It's exactly what it is. He's the Speaker of the House. He can stop it, but he won't because he's on board. So why is he on board? Is Mike Johnson representing his own voters as he backs Joe Biden's signature agenda item, a war against Russia? No, he's not. Republican voters in Louisiana are not for this. Republican voters nationally are not for this. They hate this. It has nothing to do with them. And it's insulting. As their country is invaded, we send billions to prevent the invasion of another country that we have nothing to do with? But the Uniparty demands this, so Mike Johnson is doing it. And so at some point you ask, well, why are they demanding this, actually? Why is war with Russia the most important thing? If you look at the numbers or a map, it wouldn't be obvious that Russia would be America's main enemy. There are other candidates. Well, we know why, and that's because of the geostrategic planning of Kissinger and Brzezinski. And Brzezinski, uh, in the main, right, pointing out that uh, Euro, uh, Eurasia, the heartland, that's the key point that you have to control to have world dominance. But we shouldn't think that because the, USS, the, US, the USSA, uh, because it declines, that therefore, we're, oh, we'll have a much more just world uh, when the USSA declines because it's the chief problem. It's not America that's the problem. It's the steering committees and the power blocks above America and the government that run our country and the Western world. That's the problem. And until we recognize that, none of this ever changes. So we do their designs in these foreign wars and occupations. That's it's that simple. So <clears throat> the enemies are the strategic opposition that's left out there to the Atlanticist power block. And no dummies, that doesn't mean Atlantis. Dude, oh, we're talking about Atlantis, dude. No, Atlanticist power block. That's an area of the West, not Atlantis. Be because Russia is the largest white Christian country in the world? Maybe. Could it be because they're getting rich from war? Well, that's certainly true. And there may be other reasons as well. We could guess. But we don't need to because we know that it's happening and we know that war against Russia is not the only war we're going to be engaged in and not the only one that Biden announced tonight. Biden also told the country that we're going to have boots on the ground in Gaza. Really? Or admitted it, in fact. American forces have actually been there for months. Did you know that? Did anyone ask you? Has anyone explained to you, no matter where your sympathies lie, what the point of this is, when we'll know we've won? What's the objective here? American lives will be at risk. But of course, no one's told you. And of course, you already know the point. The point is to suck the United States into another foreign war that can't possibly help the United States, a war that can only hurt us and already is hurting us. And we're doing this not because it helps us, but because foreign interests are demanding that we do it. America is being used, as we so often have been. Well, that's exactly what I just said. Exactly. Because that's uh, exactly correct. So, yes, I'm right. And <clears throat> um, now I sent myself a video that we need to look at. And it doesn't pop up here in this thing. So I'm going to resend it to myself here. Who you texting with? Myself. I'm texting my alters in my head. I got a party in my head because I'm MK Ultra. Okay, here it is. Now we'll get to this here in a little bit because of the, the weird uh, CIA admissions and whatnot. 
which we're going to talk about here in a little bit. If you want to support the show, you can via the uh, Stream Labs function. This is how AI optimizes. And we will get to clarity becomes provided. I got too many browsers open. It's getting crazy over here. Uh, now I've lost. I lost Tucker. Get rid of this one. Okay, so. So Bustamante that we've covered a couple times, he done a new, he's done a new interview. This uh, you know the former CIA guy that uh, is doing all these podcasts and talking about this and that and whatnot. And some of the of the what he says is interesting and worth listening to. Now he's done an interview that somebody sent me about how he's leaving the U.S. and people are reading into that. Oh well, he must know because he's former CIA and that means that oh, we got to flee the country or something. I don't know, but. Um, we'll, we'll play a clip from that here in a moment. And to remind you guys, uh, the part two will be up probably even tonight. I've got a lot of energy. That's chalk.com. That's what gives us energy around here, these parts. So I will probably do the part two to, to this book tonight. <clears throat> and uh, I'm thinking for the next lecture, for those that don't know, we do periodic lectures, uh, usually once a week. Through a lot of different important books. Could be global elite text, could be a philosophy text, could be a religious text, could be a classic of literature with some profound, deep core meaning that most people miss. And this next one that we're doing, I'm almost ready to do it, is Through the Looking Glass. Now, if longtime followers remember, we did Alice's Adventures in Wonderland maybe five years ago. So we're going to uh, move, <clears throat> we're going to uh, step back. And look at a lot of weird esoteric stuff going on. That you, you, I guarantee you didn't know this. Most people don't know this. First of all, a lot of literature and music references this book. Do you know the Beatles? Sergeant Pepper? Do you know Sergeant Pepper? I am the Eggman, goo 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 That's from this. Most people don't know that. Did you know that the weirdo author uh, struggled with mathematical determinism? I know uh, other things. You, we know about the PEDO type of stuff. I know that. But <clears throat> we'll mention that when we get into this. There's a lot of weird themes, a lot of bizarre mathematical dimensions. I mean, it, the, the book is crazy. So I don't know if that dude was was smoking some Joe Rogan or what he was doing back in the day, but he was tripping out. And he wrote it into his text. So we're going to talk about that. I'm also finally getting to the end of this which was really good. Whitney Webb's part two, Jeff Stein McGaffrey. Somebody's got to write the P Diddy book. Maybe I'll put that. Um, maybe I'll, I'll make that a, 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 a topic as well. We'll see. Now the, you gotta be careful writing a P Diddy book though. Cause people that write P Diddy, I'm not, I'm not seriously talking about writing a P Diddy though, that book. That's a joke, but I'm saying that <clears throat> we're going to make a note of that of whoever tries to write a P Diddy book. <laughs> has hard, comes upon hard times. And the result of all of this is that the world is now closer to nuclear war at this moment than at any time in history, closer during than it was during the Cuban Missile Crisis. We have no idea where this is going. You never do once people start to die, once wars begin. No PowerPoint can tell you, no speech to a joint session can tell you where this is going. It's dynamic. It's completely unpredictable. And that's why wise people pause before accelerating. But there are no wise people in charge in either party, on either side. Do you think Tony Blinken, the Secretary of State, has any clue what will happen in a war with Russia? Of course not. You can't. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, this is, this is a good point to the incompetence side of things. Like, the government officials uh, typically are incompetent. And that's, again, we've been saying this forever. And ever, that's on purpose. That's because they're the frontispiece, the lightning rod that takes all the heat. But they're not calling the shots. People way more powerful than them, with way more money than them. Right? You think, what, what do these people make? Like $300,000, $400,000 a year, according to their government salary? Well, they're really calling the shots. Versus somebody with like 50 trillion, I'm not I'm joking, like 50 billion dollars, right? Like, I wonder who's got more power. Mm, I don't know. I mean, just that alone should tell you that like 
I mean, don't you think Jeffrey Bazas has more power than Nancy Pelosi? I don't know. I mean, Nancy Pelosi is like an old school Democrat, you know, corrupt politician. But, I mean, somebody with, I don't know, how much money does Jeff Bezos even have? I don't even know what he has. $70 billion? Who knows? Then he just, he just passed Elon again, right? Let's see who's got what. Whoa. $195 billion. Good grief, dude. What? He just moved to Florida, by the way. He's my neighbor now. <laughs> Shout out to Jeffrey. What's what's up, Jeff? <laughs> Send me an email later, dog. <laughs> Yo, I'm, I'm see you at Whole Foods, bro. We'll go get a clam chowder in the organic section. Ha <laughs> ha. So he, because Jeff, Jeff lives next door here in Florida. $195 billion. What? Unbelievable, right? And then we got to have some conspiracy idiot in the chat being like, well, it's not anything compared to what the Illuminati actually have in their uh, secret, secret hidden uh, vaults. Uh, yeah, I know, dude. I know. Okay. I've been reading about the Illuminati since about the year 1998, okay? Okay, Joe, I will have to tell y'all right now in the audience, some of y'all gonna start talking about the Illuminati to me. And the essence of this is that what you got to understand, audience, is that I was reading about the Illuminati when you were still poo-pooing in your diapers, Okay. So, you don't tell me about Hermes Trismegistus, because I know that mofo when you were still weeping in your crib. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. So anyway, who do you think has got more power? Jeff Bezos or Nancy Pelosi does have some power. So, let's, let's think of some other uh, frontispiece politicians. Actually, she's pretty good. So, let's see what Nancy Pelosi's net worth is. She, I know she's made a few hundred million, probably. hundred million dollars. Okay. So, supposedly she had a hundred, two hundred million. Her salary, her salary is $225,000. And she's got a hundred and fourteen million, according to 2018 numbers. Hmm. All right. Be Jeff Bezos has, like, what's the magnitude of that? Like, 20 million times more money or is a billion uh no let's see 20 20 x let's see 10 x would be 1 billion uh it is 100 x 100 billion but it's not but he has 200 so that's 200 x so jeff bezos has 200 x of what this goblin has <clears throat> So I wonder who's got more power. Hey, this, this is going. going. This, this is, is so reckless, reckless that it qualifies as suicidal. And maybe they are, but the rest of us aren't. But the most interesting fact of the speech was the emphasis. There was not a meaningful word for the entire duration about the things that actually matter to people who, but he does have a present for you. He's got something to give you, something you want very badly. Here it is. Look. It's a decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. The Supreme Court majority wrote the following. And with all due respect, justices, women are not without electoral, electoral power. Uh, excuse me, electoral or political power. You're about to realize just how much you get right about.
Don't go anywhere because <clears throat> you need to see this real quick. Just a, just a reminder, we're still here. We got a lot more to get through. We're having fun tonight. And also we have our live event coming up March 15th in LA. I'm gonna put you on something crazy real quick. Most of these Zuma gym bros are consuming macro guzzling synthetic dyes and synthetic sweeteners on the daily. They don't even know it. Goofy AF. There's nothing great about that. Do not listen any further unless you are an alpha or sigma male. This is important and there could be consequences. There's a new certified sigma male pre-workout powder for sigmas only. It is guaranteed to empower you to dominate your co-workers, fire your boss, aggressively gamble, or invade a small village. Chad Mode stands out from the crowd by excluding artificial flavors, preservatives, sweeteners, and dyes. We've even avoided so-called natural flavors, which are actually not natural at all, ensuring a clean and effective formula. Experience the pure goodness of Chad Mode, colored with organic blue spirulina extract, organic lemon, cherry, and organic maple crystals. Forget synthetic caffeine made in a sketchy Chinese lab. Embrace the natural power of organic green coffee bean extract, which will get your mind going and pump you up to the max. Chad Mode is made in America with all clean ingredients, the first clean pre-workout of its kind. Why are these people adding synthetic sweeteners to every single pre-workout when there are many studied downsides to consuming nasty fake sucralose? Each dose of Chad Mode contains the kick of a cup and a half of coffee, delivering a surge of energy alongside essential vitamins, minerals, amino acids, and herbal extracts. Chad Mode will allow you to fire your boss and dominate anyone who opposes you. Chad Mode will make you more dominant in your daily life, so proceed with caution. It's as simple as mixing one or two scoops of our fine powder into water or juice, providing you with a delicious energizing beverage featuring a burst of sweet organic fruit flavor. Chad Mode will give you the extra edge you desperately crave. Don't miss out secure your supply of Chad Mode on TikTok shop with a limited I want to show time. Off something that we're all proud of. I got a browser here. This is uh, Jay Dyer's much vaunted, much sought after philosophy 101. Now, he just got this page up. We are just testing it out. You guys are some of the first people in the world to see it. I want to say, for my part, it's not philosophy 101. I think this is a mis mistitling. I really think it is of it as like philosophy unleashed. Because a philosophy 101 course, they give you kind of some useless information that you can't make sense of. Jay actually lays out over 12 weeks, dozens and dozens of hours put into just the presentation of this, let alone the hundreds and thousands of hours of research that it takes to have a coherent evolution and history of the origins of philosophy, the uses of philosophy, the different ways to look at it over time and how that has uh, been brought about to what we have today, which is almost an absence of philosophy on the objective logic and reason side and an overabundance of woke philosophy that is irrational and is made up day by day as people are like, I think we should bring racism back and then here's a justification and then it gets wokeified and, and spread out. And then all of a sudden you have a bunch of communist, socialist ideas where you become the property in action you need to be able to stand your own ground. It helps to have a foundation in philosophy because it's a method to find truth when you get down. All right. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what was going on with, there, with the ads there, but <clears throat> yeah, you can uh, head on over to chalk.com, use promo code J50 to get 50% off or the promo code JAY53LIFE. Uh, what the heck is up with those ads? We've always done funny ads over here. We love chalks. Uh, uh, I want to show humorous ads that, that we see i got a browser here uh, this is uh j die anyway so uh where are we at tucker we're still with tucker and then if you missed it we had lord v so lord v came on We'll hear a little bit of that. I'm trying to stop that. I want to shut down the border. He said, when I win, immediately surge the border. And they had the 26 million Russians die. Yes. As I get older, I lied when I was a kid. I lied some when I was an adult. As I get older, lies have consequences. My whole life is now about not ever telling them. Yes. Like catching myself, being honest. My wife's like, you look at that girl? Yeah, I am. Sorry. I said, like, oh, no, I'm not. <laughs> because your mind gets trained to be accurate when you stop lying. You look at that girl? Yeah, I am. 
Sorry. I'm going to be honest. Um, this is an interesting uh, second half. So we had the Victor Dav uh, Davis Hansen historian guy on for the first part with uh, the, the Biden. And then he brought on Lord V. And uh, they had some interesting conversations. So let's see a little bit more of this. Just a, just a few clips. I don't know if I can... If this is uh, this might hurt people's feelings over here on the tube. Doesn't want to give up their cows or their farm or be a slave. So what they're threatened by is self-sufficient people because it's a military takeover by the left and, and, and by the WHO. And we talked about this when I was on three or four months ago on your show. I mean, mm. they, they... All right. So I will um, give you guys this link as well. And you can then... If you go over to my ex, not my ex-girlfriend, <laughs> my ex-feed right here, and you can follow Lord Voldemort right there. And thank you to you guys in the chat. Shout out to the mods, keeping it real, keeping it, holding down the fort. All right, was there anything else I wanted to get to on, this is running no, no, no. We don't want this. too too much Candace's go. We got five Candace's playing at once. So slow down, Candace. Whoa. The alternate Candace's in my head are all playing at once. Uh, now, we'll hit this briefly before we move to the next part. Because this is a Candace is actually a good transition to the other topic. Now, <clears throat> this was a surprise to me. And. I don't know if she's talking off the cuff and just making a joke or if she's saying, like, no, she actually is considering this. Either way, it's interesting. More clarity becomes provided the deeper you get into your faith. I went from atheism, I went from being faithful as a child to an atheist in my young adulthood and was brought back to faith because I was, you know, involved in a non-denominational church. And now I am so, I, I'm going to be Orthodox Russian by tomorrow. <laughs> so she sucks about joining the Russian Orthodox Church. And she's, of course, talking to millions of people. Um, maybe she was just kind of saying it offhand, or maybe she's saying, I'm looking into it. Or maybe she's like actually a catechumen somewhere. I don't know. But um, yeah, interesting. And I think if you pay attention to her feed, she's been talking about uh, CIA mind control. She's been talking about MK Ultra. She's talking about uh, Cat Williams type of stuff that we've been talking about, Hollywood rituals. Uh, all of, she's talking about all of it. So people are saying, and every time somebody mentions this, it's like 50,000 views. This got 50,000 views. Me saying we should chat. And then people in the, in the, in the feed are like, yes, Candace, talk to him. This is not Candace's video. <laughs> this is a guy named George who put this up. So you have to tag Candace and people are like, how do Tell Candace to have you on. I don't, she doesn't know who I am unless she watches our stuff, which I think she might. So the best way to, to do this, audience, remember, every time we've gotten me on a larger show, it's because the audience reaches out or the producers of somebody actually like us. So actually quite a few producers out there like what I do. And that's helped. Um, and then the other side of it is the audience members that continue to push. So it's actually up to you guys because I could tag Candace all day long. I can send emails. All day. Nobody's going to pay attention to my email. Uh, dear Daily Wire. No, nobody's going to pay attention to that. But everybody knows it would be an awesome conversation. So the only way that we've gotten on shows is you guys keep pushing and keep saying it. That will get their attention. When they see in the chat 500 people saying talk to Jay Dyer then they notice it then they remember and sometimes it takes a year remember it took how long did it take with Stefan at least three years maybe more four years it took uh, three or four years for Stefan Molyneux debate it took uh, three or four years for the Matt Dillahunty debate it took uh, two or three years to get on Tim Cast um, yeah you get the point right all of these bigger shows, they respond to just constant stuff. And I've talked to the, said to the PD, uh, PBD producers at least three times. Emails, text messages. Hey, uh, you can have me on. I mean, I'm always down to go on. I mean, Sammy the Bulls uh, producer even said, hey, you should have Jay Dyer on. So I guess it's just a situation where you have to keep, you know, keep pushing. Plus, 
uh, you know, we're still we're still mid tier in terms of audience size. I mean, we got a good audience reach with the last few episodes of uh, Lord Voldemort Fourth Hour. I mean, those got anywhere from three hundred to five hundred thousand. So those are I'm getting you know closer towards a million views on a lot of those fourth hours. Uh, if you count Alex's upload of my show and the band up video and the full hour, maybe a couple of them have, have maybe touched a million, but I still can't get one single video to break a million. I've come close. We've had, uh, 800,000, 850,000. So well, that's what I'm saying is that the, the people who have this level and size of audience is very difficult to go to break into that tier. And the only way that you're going to break into that tier is if they keep seeing the groundswell of people interested in them having a conversation. So it doesn't work for me to send a freaking postmark letter to Candace Owens. Dear Candace, I've written this with a quill and ink. Would you please have me on your show? That's not going to happen. All right, next up, this actually does transition well because Candace has been talking uh, a lot about Diddy and... Occult rituals, which Cat Williams talked about. That's a bunch of rituals. Okay, you don't understand. They doing rituals. Well, that's what we've been saying, and other people too. So let's see this first clip. Um, she's been talking a lot about. It. Now we talked about this with Tristan three weeks ago, two three weeks ago. So we've been on the edge of this too. You and allow you to listen to Ian Carroll. He's an independent journalist that is investigating everything that is going on. And he explains that connection that Fahim has with Michael Jackson. Take a listen. So this new lawsuit just came out that shows tons of evidence that P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, has been running a sexual blackmail operation, very much like Jeffrey Epstein, but in the rap and music industry for basically 30 years. And in that lawsuit, we learned that his head of security, while he's running the sexual blackmail ring, is this guy named Fahim Muhammad, who, before working for Diddy, was the head of security for Michael Jackson when he was only 21. And he was one of the first people on the scene when Michael Jackson died. And before we go to Michael Jackson, the most important part of the Diddy case to bring across is the fact that the record executives at the very top knew what P. Diddy was doing. They were attending the parties with underage girls where they were spiking drinks. They were deeply involved in Diddy's personal life. And all evidence points to them supporting his operation. Or at the very least, turning a blind eye to it. So yes, this is obviously huge. It's also potentially terrifying. And now, if you want to be rational and use the rational side of your brain, you just go, okay, well, this could just be a coincidence, right? Like Fahim Muhammad, he is in security. And yes, he obviously uh, is high up in security. He was providing security to Michael Jackson. He happened to die on his watch. Big deal, right? Big deal. Well, I think that would lead us to the question of who exactly is Fahim Muhammad, because that's kind of a a big first job to have. You're 21 years old and you're protecting the king of pop. What exactly are his qualifications? Let's go back to Ian Carroll and his reporting. And now here's the best part. Check this out. In This is in all of his bios, by the way, but we're pointing it out now. In 2008, Fahim graduated from Sacramento State University with a bachelor's of science degree in business administration with a concentration in real estate and marketing, okay? Do you realize what's wrong with that yet? Anything coming to mind? When did Michael Jackson die? June 25th, 2009, Jackson died from cardiac arrest caused by a propofol and benzodiazepine overdose, caused by his doctor apparently. Um, hold up, hold the phone. Pause. Why is a dude who just graduated college last year with a business and real estate degree the head of security for the king of pop, for Michael Jackson? The most well, Ian Carroll also investigates those claims as well. Take a listen. And yes, Jackson did say that the Jews are we're probably referring to the Jews in the music industry are like leeches and that they took everything from them and that they did it on purpose. But when you look into those allegations or those insults, you realize that because of his will that was probably fake and filed right before his death. 
So the will was signed on July 7th in Los Angeles by three witnesses. But Jackson's family pointed out that he was in New York that day, and there's video proving it. So they changed their story. But the witnesses definitely saw it, and it was just in New York. So anyways, because of this will, John Bronca was put in charge of his estate which included his net worth of $230 million, but far more importantly, his 50% share of Sony ATV worth $750 million. Yes, he was taking on Sony. He was going after the hand that feeds him. And when you look into John Bronco... Yeah, so the thing with Jacko <laughs> is that all this stuff is really intricate, right? I don't think it's uh, black and white either way, pun intended. <laughs> It's not black and white because <laughs> that was not a planned joke. That one just worked out perfect, right? Um, so the reason, so uh, I don't know. He seemed to be an odd character. I do think that he had issues, obviously, and I think that there are these organized crime structures within the music industry has been there for a long time. And again, we're going to get into this with the Diddy uh, uh, stream that Tristan and I will do in, in the next few days. But absolutely, I think that um, a uh, no longer alive pop star is oftentimes worth much more than a, an alive pop star. And that's even come up in a lot of movies. So this doesn't surprise me. I have read and looked into the history of the Jacko stuff. And Jamie and I were just talking about this today. When you learn more about, for example, I've been diving down the, the Diddy rabbit hole in the last week or two. <clears throat> I, I just more and more think that probably half of the pop stars that have had these suspicious deaths. Yeah. Okay. I'm talking about Randy Quaid, Starwhacker stuff. Absolutely. At least half. Right now, yeah, some of the pop stars are have uh, drug and alcohol problems, um, but still, and I, I look, it's just looking more and more like that. And that, by the way, vindicates everything in my books, doesn't it? Now, my books are about movies, but it's the same stuff in movies <clears throat> because it's the entertainment industry, and they're run by the same structures of control of compromise. Compromise. That's what Diddy was doing with his his fantasies, his freak offs. And you don't want to know what a freak off is. It's gross. Ugh. Diddy's freak offs weren't just for his pleasures; they were uh, for blackmail. And he even said, <laughs> like, when you get these people that have no talent, like, you can just control them with these videos. So that's what's going on. Um, look, Prince, I like Prince a lot more than I like Michael Jackson, but I mean, Prince said a lot of the same stuff. Prince said, you got to be independent if you can, because these record companies are vipers. Uh, but it's not just like people, normies think, oh yeah, the record companies like take money from the artist. No, no, no. They're like organized crime, dude. And it goes back to like 50s and 60s era music with payola payola was where uh there was a racket <clears throat> to have certain records played and it tied into the jukebox scam and all it's like a huge racket of the what, 50s or 60s or something <clears throat> that's an old mafia racket but nowadays it's like <clears throat> well maybe not nowadays but like uh 90s you know when, when record companies had a lot more power it was, it was uh, the same type of organized crime structure that didn't just rip off the artists, but would it's like a mind control gang thing. Handlers. That's what we're talking about. See the rest of this video. Well, Ian Carroll also investigates those claims as well. Take a listen. And yes, Jackson did say that the Jews are... Or you'll get in trouble again. You look into YouTube, John Bronco, percent share of Sony ATV worth seven hundred and fifty million. Yes, he was taking on Sony. He was going after the hand that feeds him. 
And when you look into John Bronca, in 2003, Jackson fired Bronca because he was siphoning money out of Jackson's accounts in collusion with Sony Music CEO Tommy Mottola and funneling it through a bunch of offshore accounts in the Caribbean. John Bronca is Jewish and Tommy Mottola is also Jewish. Wow. Did you guys know that? Did you guys know any of that? Because I certainly didn't. I didn't realize that this was a conflict at the end of Michael Jackson's life that suddenly. <clears throat> yeah, but this means uh, organized crime structures. That's what this means. And by the way, if you read this, you'll notice some of the same organized crime mentioned. Now that's politics, but wait a minute. No, it's not just politics because Jeff Stein McEffrey spills over into entertainment doesn't it yeah by like all the a-listers or what not all of them you know what i mean like a lot of a-listers going to uh you know going to the beach party going to the r kelly after party who by the way r kelly also had a sex cult that he created remember that that all everybody forgot about r kelly r kelly was doing the same type of stuff Except that he also, I don't know if he was using blackmail. I wouldn't be surprised. But he actually tried to create a sex cult. Did you know that? Do you remember that? Put the key in the ignition. Hot and fresh out the kitchen. Mama rolling that body. Got everybody blackmailed <laughs> in this situation. I'm just joking. Chris, stop popping in the stress navigator. How's that go? The remix to Ignition was way better than the normal song. Okay, so let's see. We're on P. Diddle now. Now, this dude is a a, a black gangster, Keith D, and he alleges allegedly that Diddy gave was offering him money to go after Tupac. So <clears throat> the crazy thing is that people are digging into this now and it looks like there might be, uh, uh, we might be coming back to the same classic stories of Death Row Records, uh, uh, feuds, Suge Knight feuds back in the 90s, Biggie Smalls's hit and Tupac, the East Coast, West Coast 90s rap war remember this in the 90s if you were in the 90s you heard of this i'm sure but so now it's looking like a lot of stuff is coming out now again we don't know and sometimes you can't always trust hitmen uh organized crime figures i do think uh sammy the bull in the interviews that we've done i think he's telling the truth i don't have any doubts about sammy the bull everything he said verified lines up but sometimes um people you know, when, when we've studied like serial killers, right? The, sometimes serial killers will exaggerate their numbers for whatever reasons, because they're narcissistic, because they want to be, oh, I was actually the, the biggest killer, whatever. Various reasons why. Fame, fortune, whatever. So <clears throat> we don't always know if they're telling the truth. This is what is alleged by Keith D. Gave Zip a million dollars that was supposed to be handed over and Zip ended up keeping it. And I remember when I interviewed T.K. Kirkland, who was actually roommates with Zip at one point, they were that close, he actually said, yeah. The fans said, said that too. He said that, that shit actually happened. Well, the story that has circulated was that after Tupac got killed, Puffy allegedly gave the money- I heard. To, to Zip. Yes. And Zip was supposed to give the money to, to Keefe in that. Yes. But he never gave the money to but him. But thank God he never gave him the money. Right? Think about it. If he gave the money, Puffy will be in prison now, money for hire, a murder for hire. So thank God. If, if, if this is a true story. I, I'm not saying yes or no, but if he would have gave him them the money, it would have been a murder for hire and Puffy would be locked up. The FBI and, and he, said they he said he's a dirty motherfucker. Yeah, he, and he said even that. said that like in retrospect, that was probably the best thing that could have ever happened to Puffy. So the allegation is that the gangster Keefe D was offered this million dollars uh, 
and I believe I don't remember the detail. Like who who do we not know? I forget. I get some of these cases mixed up. Do we not know who killed Tupac? Is Tupac still alive? Right. He's 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 on uh he's hanging out with Bigfoot and Elvis. <laughs> What I'm asking is, was anybody actually <coughs> arrested? Okay, so it is Keefe D. Has uh, confessed over and over. And there's documentaries on this. I haven't looked too deeply into the Tupac issue, which is why I'm... But this, is, this guy claims that Diddy was involved in that. Allegedly. So that's how this goes. The, the dude that we're talking about here. By Zip stealing the money, now Puffy isn't connected to that shit. Or else it would have been like a murder for hire or something. You know what I'm saying? I, the FBI said they were just Zip. So the, the FBI told you the dirty motherfucker, yeah. So the FBI told you the Zip kept that money. They said the Zip's the dirty motherfucker. Everybody cross you. You're the last one to know every fucking thing. Even lawyers. If anyway, so <laughs> apparently... The money wasn't actually paid, <laughs> so then there's no trail connecting anything is the issue here. So, <clears throat> interesting. I want to remind you guys, too, that we'll be live in Hollywood uh, at our event, a five-hour event. It's going to be a lot of fun. We had this uh, eight months ago event that was a lot of fun with Jamie Kennedy. <clears throat> we had a, uh, a, a blast. Everybody loved it. So if you want to come on out, be sure and join us. At this five-hour event here in Los Angeles, we'll have lectures. Jamie will lecture my wife for an hour and a half on Hollywood. I will lecture for an hour and a half on geopolitics, espionage, spirituality, <coughs> and, and how that all ties in, the Orthodox worldview. Um, I will be doing some impressions, as you can imagine. And then we'll have the set from our buddy Jamie Kennedy. He killed it last time. We had so much fun. He was like, that's it again, dad. So we're doing it again. And you get your tickets right there at the Eventbrite link. Eventbrite link right there. Get your tickets. And come on out. It's going to be a lot of fun. March 15th, five-hour event. Book signing. Yes, you can bring your books to get signed. <clears throat> and uh, bring your Scream DVDs. I mean, Jamie Kennedy will sign your, your Scream Blu-rays and your Scream VHSs. Actually... A, bringing a Scream VHS sounds pretty awesome. I get, get Jamie Kennedy to sign that. I think I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to go get a VHS of Scream and get him to sign one and two. I already got him to sign my uh, copies of uh, Jamie Kennedy Experiment. So um, anyway, it's a lot of fun. And we were on his podcast. We had a blast with him on his podcast right here. If you want to watch that, um, it's actually like a two... We were there for two hours, but I think he ended up editing it down to about hour and a half. So you can watch over on his channel, uh, our full, 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 full podcast with Jamie Kennedy. And get your tickets because it's basically a week. So we'll see you guys in a week. And don't wait because there are still some tickets left. Go ahead and get them. Uh, let's see. We're going to do this. We already we've already done this the Ukraine stuff, but here's an admission from this came out what a week ago. Uh, yeah, the CIA was involved in all this Ukraine stuff. Shocker! Oh, but if you said that for the last ten years back to 2014, which we have, so Jamie Kennedy did a, a fairly clean set. So it's not always. So, but yeah, if you, if you don't want to hear comedy that might make butt jokes or something, then you don't have to stay for, you can leave whenever you want, bro. It's not like you have to, you have to be there. People are, is this a, is this a child friendly event? Well, I mean, you can leave if you want to, but <laughs> uh, how, what are you talking about children? Are you bringing toddlers to a comedy event? That doesn't make much sense. Get a babysitter, dude. Uh, the spy war, how the CIA hunted, funded or helped fight against Tiny mustache Russian man. <laughs> Somebody sent this too. I don't know if we're going to get to this. The person who inspired uh, everybody from Jim Morrison to 
Lady Gaga and Abramovich. So there's some other weirdo out there that our buddy Matthew Arrett over at his website, Canadian Patriot, has stumbled upon this other weirdo, uh, Garibay. Have you heard of Garibay? So this is some other kind of uh, uh, Esalen Institute connected uh, transhumanist weirdo who has inspired uh, Abrama Bitch and, and Gaga. I'm trying to find the dude. Chaos Theory. Who is, where is this Garibay at? Anyway, it's a really long article. I was going to go into it, but I mean, we'd be sitting here reading this for all night if we did this. Uh, gets into Dave McGowan, uh, Laurel Canyon scene. So uh, they went really deep there. But I'm trying to find a picture of the, the actual dude. Garibay. Fernando Garibay is who we're talking about. Now, he's part of WEF. A, uh, here we go. Klaus and Company. 10% of my life is making hit records and, and helping artists find themselves uh, through their art. Uh, pop stars, specifically. And the other part is I teach creativity as a skill. To so that he's uh, supposed to be this polymath character. And I suppose the he doesn't go back to Crowley, but I'm saying the from the time of the uh, uh, you know CIA created counterculture in Laurel Canyon to um, this polymath figure, record producer, writer, entrepreneur, author, academic, Garibay describes himself as someone who teaches creativity and helps the pop star find themselves. He now teaches creativity at the World Economic Forum's Young Global Leaders. I am a mirror. I'm going to show you the version, the best version of yourself. And a version that you can't see because you can't put a mirror into your brain. Says that he creates uh, a world so authentic that they want to be like, create a world so authentic they want to be like you, hang out with you, have a relationship with you, hit all those marks. That's what uh, NWA, Beatles, Floyd, Zeppelin, they create a world. And so he tries to help the pop stars create worlds. The Garibay Institute looks very, uh, very spacey, right? Like we're, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna launch into the next dimension with Captain Picard and this, this weirdo guy. And he's gonna make us creative. I guess he's then worked with, uh, Gaga and Abrama Biatch. But there's that. Uh, you can read this article here. It's a really long article, but good information. I'll put it in the chat. But again, just uh, pointing out then that our pop culture, whether it's the performance art or whether it's the dance or whether it's the imagery, the cinematography, the, the music, a lot of it comes from these weirdos uh, who right or transhumanists and they're into satanism they're into all kinds of stuff so yes yet another example of that all right let's see what's next all right we got to talk about roe jogan and uh cat so of course you can't really play rogan clips so we're going to be doing it via proxy through i think we played this guy's we played some of his clips before Williams made it on Joe Rogan show. I haven't watched the full So we're looking for some of the highlights. The problem is that you it's hard to play highlights because it the algorithm, right? So we'll see what what he thinks is a highlight and then we'll see we'll react to that. Um now Isaac did a breakdown uh, a 45 minute breakdown, but he just touched the surface with talking about Hermes Trismegistus uh, excuse me, Trismegistus, Joe. That's Hermes Trismegistus. So, because Joe didn't pronounce it correctly, and then he corrected him. So, it gets pretty wild. Um, and Tristan and I will break this down further, but let's, let's hit some of the highlights. Concept to have, and 
far too lucrative and benefit. Sorry, um, just in case something goes weird with this video, uh, you might be watching it in a smaller frame just because that was the only way for me to keep it up, but you'll be able to hear it fine. All right. Special to not be attempted. Yeah, I mean, if I was going to run some global power organization, I would try to co-opt every single leader, try to suck them in, offer support, bring them out to wherever the fuck I have my big Trying ass. to suck them in like P. Diddy. That's <laughs> meetings. Fly everybody in private jets, talk about the climate crisis. All organizations have to follow the same rules. Yeah, that's wild. Recruitment is... So does that mean that there is the World Economic Forum that's trying to <laughs> create a global government as one of the entities? There's many other entities, not just WEF, there's many others. But So here we're getting, I guess, the admissions of everything that we have talked about, people are figuring it out now. An important facet of all, like... We have to get some young global leaders. Well, understand, this is the only I've reason that um, we can talk about these big Illuminati-like entities at this period of time is just because of time like they aged out like you can't right get in new <laughs> so well i appreciate i actually appreciate that he said illuminati like entities right because he sounds like he knows that it's not identical to the bavarian illuminati which was a an atheistic uh version of platonism so mm, uh, one point for that. That's that's good points right there. By the way, we broke this down the whole Shea Shea interview as well as uh, of the stuff that was in a way prophetic because he was saying that you're going to start hearing you know more and more about uh, you know people like Diddy and others. This that, that, you know he was saying this stuff was going to start coming out. Here we are, right? It, it's coming out. And why does this matter? But well, it's like another Jeff Stein McEffrey. <laughs> Everybody got decrepit over there and they can't exchange really through this period of history. And so that's how we ended up with the Bob Lazars and everything throughout history. You, uh, I have to disagree here because I'm sure I expect that this is going to get a little wacky because we get like, you know, pyramid stuff. I think he says that in this, he thinks that the pyramids were uh, like some kind of water-based energy system i mean that's plausible right that's more plausible than it was a a laser weapon or something like that like a power plant i mean maybe they had some version of steam energy back in ancient egypt that seems plausible but now, now they get into anunnaki right uh black people love to talk about anunnaki and by the way i'll be on an anunnaki podcast tomorrow no monday uh, Y'all know XG, Sam Tripoli's co-host XG. I'll be on with him and his buddies on their Nephilim podcast Monday. And, um, but some of this stuff is just gets so wacky. Like they start talking about Hermes, Trismegistus is an alien. And I mean, what? Could really, it was much easier to um, get people to not tell nobody. Right. As part of your job. You know what I mean? Imagine going to a World Economic Forum party. What did those freaks do with all the listening devices? Well, actually, if you guys remember our stream from a couple weeks ago, we, we, we watched the first World Economic Forum meetup. And it was like a freaking Holiday Inn conference room. It was not uh, anything close to, you know, Tom Coombs' Eyes Wide Shut Ball. <laughs> it was like, uh, you know, Ramada Inn uh, conference room with, you know, dripping wet eggs and juicy sausages and, you know, people trying to uh, uh, fight over who had the more, you know, fold out chairs it did not look like anything elite but that was like the 98 2001 event so that that one was actually funny um maybe the after party it looked like in that video they went skiing for their after party maybe they brought in the hose afterwards because it does say that 
Davos sells out. The hose gets sold out whenever Davos comes to town. So maybe at night it gets crazy. But it certainly didn't look like any, it looked like a damn nerd convention with a bunch of weirdos. Remember, that was funny. We were cracking up at the first Young Global Leaders event. Um, but look, I mean, World Economic Forum, that's just a bunch of corporate people. I mean, that's not even like the top, top, you know, that's, you're not going to be having Illuminati events there. Is it been scanned out of the room? Man. All their phones are put into bags. And locked away in a lead vault. <laughs> what do those freaks do? Because you know it's not normal shit. You know everybody's buttoned down like that and wants to control the world. There's... It's not normal. It's a it's a freak-off. <laughs> it's a ditty freak-off. That's what it is. Uh, what happened to the video? Can y'all see Something the involved that's outlandish that they keep a secret. Oh, yes. Many that's things. always been the case with secret societies. I mean, that's the whole eyes wide shut thing. Yeah. That there's some freak shit going on behind the scenes to anybody that really wants to control everything. You don't just want to control everything. You want to let. Yeah, but I mean, look, it's not even that. It's not even that hard to figure out, right? Like, it's not like, oh, are they doing all the sex rituals to get power? It's first of all, it's this man. It's not even hard to figure out. <laughs> Blackmail. And now everybody can see that on a lower tier than Jeff Stein McGeffrey through the Diddy style operation. So you want to be a pop star, you want to be a rapper, Diddy will sign you. You just got to kiss, you got to puff on his puff on his daddy. Right? Let him film it. And then you're good. Because now he can control you for the rest of your life. It's that simple. It's not like rocket science. It's just criminal operations. People are trying to, they're trying to tap into the 39th dimension. It's just criminal organizations. And, and that's it, man. That's like 90% of it. There's some weirdos who think that they're gaining magic powers by putting things in their butt, right? But even that is like, that's a power, that's a way to exert power. And that comes up in the Diddy stuff, which we'll talk about, right? Because it's like, if you do this, you'll do anything. So we own you. That's all it means. Now, some people are weirdos and they take it serious and they think they're contacting Pleiadians and they're getting butt power or whatever they're getting. But it's like just basic level criminal operations at a bigger scale, you see. Probably everything so we can get away with some freak shit too. too. Right, I'm saying, but these Epstein like characters have existed throughout history, throughout history. whether they were kings or what like mm -hmm. like um, human beings are human beings universally. So um, everybody is a supplier. Epstein, Weinstein, like these guys um, knew what. these extremists liked and provided it mm -hmm. and provided the way for you to ha like like um to have a billion dollars and not create a fantasy island type environment <laughs> yeah the plane the plane boss the plane exactly that was what Jeff Don McEffrey was shouting Right, he's like Ricard, Ricardo Montalban holding that little midget dude, and that midget dude. The plane, the plane. Right, and then in flies Bill Clinton. I want to thank you for having me here today, Ricardo Montalban. Right, Fantasy Island. Nobody knows what Fantasy Island is anymore. Tattoo. Fantasy Island, Joe. You got to understand. Anyway. Uh. We'll be breaking down some more of this. We need to do a breakdown and refutation of a lot of the... It's like a lot of conspiracy, quote-unquote, which is a lot of it's just garbage, right? Let's just be honest here. And we talked about this with Isaac. A lot of conspiracy is bull crap and disinformation. And unfortunately, a lot of the Anunnaki stuff is. 
And a lot of the ancient Egyptian, it's all gibberish, dude. It's a bunch of nonsense. People making it up, like Manly P. Hall making up crap to fool you. And they even explain this in movies like The Man Who Would Be King, with my Okain, there's my Okain, and then there's Sean Curry. In The Man Who Would Be King, and they're two Masons who make up a religion to fool everybody. And steal a bunch of money. <laughs> so, yeah, there's a bunch of con men, dude. And, uh, yeah, some people take it serious. Some people are crazy and think that they're gaining God powers and tapping into God dimensions and whatever. But it's a lot of con men, okay? If you don't understand that, you don't understand anything. Like a, The world, on its at a fundamental level, operates on scams within scams, okay? Like the third stage guild navigator explains to you. I see plans within plans. I see scams within scams. That's it. You know what I'm talking about? The big vagina mouth alien who comes to see the Padishah Emperor Shaddam IV. I see scams within scams. That's, the, that's how the world really works. Now there's evil stuff, spiritual stuff. That's all, but that's a higher level than, than this kind of stuff, right? So disinformation works really well. In a lot of different ways, yes, correct, as the audience members say, to add fake information to true information. That's one form of it. There's white propaganda, black propaganda, gray propaganda, <clears throat> different types of propaganda. But as we covered with Isaac, right, Cass Sunstein wrote the paper about cognitive inf infiltration. And this is what led him to eventually become uh, one of Obama's czars. And then eventually to uh, the NSA, and I don't know what he what his position is now, but he talked about in his paper flooding um, the internet with fake conspiracies, and he wrote that paper in two thousand eight or nine. And uh, there you go, right? Nemia dang been a Jesuit witch. Jamie Bursich says ten dollars. Cool things. He's him saying the cool things. Me just want to meet new people and do so many cool things. Ha <laughs> ha. Jamie Bursich again since two dollars twenty seven cents says a one man wicker man show sounds awesome. Let's go. Exactly. Exactly. I thought that Tristan and I in our conversation, I think I hit upon a genius with a one man wicker man show. Only the Nicolas Cage Wicker Man, though. <laughs> BMX, 1966, 10 bucks. Thank you so much. DC Woodworking, $5. Thank you, DC Woodworking. Nix K, $3. Your Cat Williams impression is almost as good as your Dawkins Atheist impression. Thank you very much. I'll take that as a compliment. JC, $5. Thank you so much. Anonymous, will you do a Paul Washer impression at your event? I'll tell you what. Because you gave me one dollar, one dollar, one dollar. I'm gonna make a, a note for the big spender, <laughs> the one dollar man. Since you do gave one dollar, did I mention that was one dollar by the way? Uh, I will do a Paul Washer impression for you. I gotta remember to do that though. I died laughing at your old Paul Washer video. Thank you. It's it's one of the old, old uh, first uploads. We've come a long way, haven't we? From uh, low res 240p comedy videos in 2007. Uploaded it to YouTube. We've come a long way. Timothy says for $10, I just got my copy of Meta Narratives. And thank you so much. Look at that. There's meta narratives. You can get those at the website jasonalysis.com in the shop. And then also the Red Book, which is 660 pages of all of my geopolitical philosophy essays in one book. And I have to mention that because we're going to be gone to LA, the uh, the Red Book orders. A lot of you have probably ordered Red Books in the past few days. Some of those are going to be a little slow. So we've gotten caught up on most orders. But if you've ordered the Red Book in the last, say, seven days, uh, you will have a bit of a delay in me getting the Red Book to you because I will be out of town. But thank you for that, Timothy. Nick's K, can you do a 
can you do a Destiny neoliberal impression? I don't. I, I've never even. I haven't listened to enough Destiny to even think of how he talks. I mean, I know it's it's kind of fast and weird. Uh, you're correct. Most music acts nowadays are manufactured by the record labels. Billie Eilish is a pop star. That's a recent example of this. I actually think uh, Billie Eilish has some talent, though. I, she's actually a good singer. Listen to her uh, Bond song. So maybe I'm sure the, I'm, sh I'm sure the record labels participate heavily in creating these people, but that doesn't necessarily mean they all have no talent. Palantir two twenty two. What sort of argument would you put forward to a pull, full preterist to support their position? Uh, what would a full preterist put forward as their position? Uh, just simply that the texts have a single reference, and so 70 AD has to be the single referent. Their view is very bizarre. I've never heard arguments for this. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I mean, it ends up being a position that allows for the existence. Evil becomes eternal. So evil is forever. Uh, you, there's never going to be a bodily resurrection. It's already happened. It's just... It's kind of a, yeah, it's a silly, silly view. Kevin Farrell, $10. Thank you so much, Kevin. Appreciate that. Nick's K, $1. I never thought I would see Jay Dyer watching DJ Vlad. Um, we played a few DJ Vlad clips because he uh, sometimes spills over into things that relate to, like, organized crime. So we played a few of those. To all you artists out there, uh, don't want to be on a record label where the executive producers all up in the video videos come to death row. <laughs> uh, DC Custom, $10. Much love you, brother. Thank you so much, DC Customs. Appreciate that. Uh, let's see. Do we? What else do we have? Uh, so I wanted to cover a little bit of this because this, this was sent to me. So Bustamante did another interview where he explains he wants to leave the U.S. of A., Let's see why he says that. Uh, his answer, by the way, was not exactly what I expected him to say. So, and we've covered his uh, interviews a few times now. Um, so let's see why he says he's going to leave L uh, not LA, <laughs> leave the USA. And this will actually tie into other things that we've talked about as well, because um, we did a live stream a while back where I got into, this was probably a year or two ago, and I mentioned some of the DUMB stuff, billionaire bunker stuff. That's what I want to talk about. Now, he doesn't say that, but this is interesting what he says. So, let's see. I mean, he does that exactly. You'll see. Those people. Because the people who are trapped in that consumer cycle, the people who are prisoners to their fear, are the people who run the economy. It's the people who are willing to break that cycle and capitalize on the fears that you can't overcome. Those are the people who actually provide you the service that you need because you can't do it by yourself. So I want to encourage the people who are willing to take the scary step. And I also want to discourage the people who already know that they're too afraid. We need both. As All right, that's not exactly the clip I'm looking. It's right here in here. This is his ad. Zero his, commitment this dude's ad. to see how impactful it can be. I had a stellar career. Uh, we had a one-year-old child at the time. And we were at a point in our career coming off of very successful operations together right before that where we were both kind of middle management. And that middle management lifestyle. Yeah, I mean, people in the chat. Are, yeah, that's a good point. I mean, you said that uh, he did an interview recently where he talked about ideology and ego are uh, better tools than coercion. Yeah, that's the acronym MICE, right? Money, uh, ideology, uh, compromise, ego. And so tonight, of course, we hit on multiple things that relate to compromise with uh, the Diddy model. By the way, if you want to support the show, you can via the super chat function. Uh, props to all you guys. We hit, uh, we were over a thousand for a good portion of the live stream tonight. Really appreciate that, all you guys in the audience. Love having you here. I don't know what his religious views are. I have no idea. Um, so basically, he had, uh, he was a CIA operative for many years, and then now he sort of does this uh, private consulting. Um, thing where he you know goes on podcasts and tells you uh, 
uh, like you can apply the techniques that we did in the CIA to your business, to your life or whatever. So basically all that is, is a lot of human psychology. So, and that's of course, when you, when you, when you get deeper into the history of espionage and their techniques and it's, it's not a lot different than the way that police and confidential informants work. So basically when a cop or, uh, you know, informants are telling the police about what the drug dealer's up to and who's selling what. It's the same type of stuff, human compromise, but on a larger scale. If you want a movie that's a really fairly realistic portrayal of um, intelligence stuff, this is an overlooked movie. It's a little slow in places, but it was... Uh, give, me the, give me the rabbit's foot. Uh, where's your wife? Where's your girlfriend? Give me the rabbit's foot. My that's my uh, uh, Seymour Hoffman from Mission Impossible. But in I just went blank. The Rachel McAdams, Philip Seymour Hoffman spy movie. It's really good. And I went blank on it. By the way, uh, me and Tristan, for you guys that are eager to know what our new live stream will be about it's going to be about true detective season one you got it buddy most wanted man this is a good spy movie if you've never seen this i highly recommend this movie this case. because it's uh one of those more accurate portrayals of spy type stuff and it's actually a fairly uh conspiratorial because this is a john le carré story so they took a john le carré uh, uh this is not the trailer Another one of his novels, um, he usually has pretty revelatory stuff in his novels, right? Because he's basically saying uh, all this intelligence stuff is a bunch of scammery. So here's Most Wanted Man. I recommend this movie because it's fairly uh, accurate. It's a, it's a great movie. Good story. Everybody uh, acts. Acting is great. And <clears throat> basically what you have is this uh, Muslim dude who is sort of on the run I thought this was, I can't find the freaking trailer. It's all clips. Where's the trailer? Here we go. So Rachel McAdams is like a social justice advocate woman. And she, she's advocating for Islamic refugees. Philip Seymour Hoffman is the uh, intelligence handler. Uh, German intelligence. And... He's the handler to this guy who's trying to um, inform on his mosque. And uh, they're trying to prevent, you know, T-E-R-R-O-R. -R uh, and then Rachel McAdams is, you know, the, the social justice advocate woman. Anyway, long story short, it's a great uh, spy movie. But the reason this is relevant for what we're talking about now is that Philip Seymour Hoffman is like a father figure to the dude that, he, that is his informant guy, right? His, uh, his operative. And he utilizes every weakness in the guy's lack of having a father figure as the father figure. He's the surrogate father figure to this guy. And because he knows this guy had no father, he's able to, you know, play on that, which is this guy's weakness. But this guy's not even sophisticated enough to know or understand that, right? So that's how this intelligence game works here of human compromise based on this person's uh, weakness. But not everybody has the same weaknesses. So then you begin to see why knowing people's vices becomes the way that you can control them. And so Diddy figured this out, <laughs> all right? DC Customs, $10. Much love, brother. Thank you so much, DC Customs. Longtime supporter, Super Chatter. Really appreciate you being there. DC Customs, again, $10. I'd like to hear your thoughts about the mystical aspects of orthodoxy, Hesekia, and other practices. Well, uh, we did an interview with uh, uh, Father Chris Moody about Hesekia, and you could find that interview maybe four or five years ago. That probably touches on that. But uh, I try to leave that kind of stuff to the spiritual uh, advisors. I'm not a spiritual father or advisor, so it's not really my place to go into that kind of stuff because that's more of a one-to-one -one thing. 
that you would encounter with your spiritual father. So, um, anyway, so Bustamante is uh, kind of, when he talks about this kind of stuff, it, it ties into the character, I'm saying, that Philip Seymour Hoffman plays in Most Wanted Man. All meant that we're spending 12 to 16 hours a day on the job, just like most people. But the difference is when you're spending 16 hours a day on the job, it means that you're in a skiff somewhere. You're, you can't take your work home. You can't work from home. So you're literally absent from the house. So trying to coordinate two 16 hour schedules along with a one-year-old, when neither of us signed up to be that kind of parent, we both wanted to be the kind of parent that was present for our children. And instead we're giving our child to some daycare center and pay. So I think the United States is going through a very difficult time right now. And I think most people understand that. There we go. Uh, we are a young country, no matter how much we- I was, I was having a hard time finding exactly where, cause this guy uh, retitled this section. The, the section was titled Leave the USA and now he retitled it America Going Through a Hard Period. So I couldn't find the exact section from earlier today. Think that we are the best in the world. We are actually going through the early part of our adolescence as a nation. And you can see it playing out every day in the headlines. You can see it in our, in our role in geopol uh, geopolitical events. You can see that we are, we're suffering. In I think what he's gonna kind of say, yeah, cause I watched uh, some of this earlier. He's gonna say basically, he doesn't want to outright say that America is basically becoming a kind of uh, socialist hellhole, but that's essentially what he's saying is going to happen. Okay, that that's where he's going with this. And the reason I say socialism and communism here is because he's actually going to say that everyone is being duped into thinking that there is this false notion of equality that everybody is absolutely identical and equal. Uh, but he's very clever about how he doesn't outright say uh, it's just becoming a, a socialist hellhole. In terms of trying to identify ourselves, we don't know, do we want to be a real democracy? Do we want to be kind of a partial democracy? Do we want to treat everybody as equal? Do we not want to treat everybody as equal? We're, st we're struggling in the same way that you and I did through middle school. Yeah, because not everybody's equal. And that's what he's going to say. Right? My children mean the world to me. And what I want to do is give them a life where they have the choice to do anything they want to do. Unfortunately, I don't believe our country for the next five to 10 years is going to be the kind of country that allows children of today to choose and be whatever they want to be. I think our country has some growing up of its own to do before we really offer people equal access to opportunities. So he's talking about, I think, mainly economic type of situations. I don't think he means moral. I mean, obviously, his if he meant moral, like gender, like, yeah, your children can be whatever they want, unfortunately, because that doesn't, I mean, not really, but you know what I mean. Uh, I think he's talking about economic uh, future opportunities. And so you're going to lose that in America if we continue the way that we're going. Uh, we will not be, and that's in the, I mean, the World Economic Forum's 2016 video of eight things to expect by 2030. One of those was America loses its place uh, as the uh, wealthiest, most successful nation. We get uh, humiliated, knocked down a few pegs is basically what Klaus's video said. See what I mean? So it's like, is there, is there a plan to intentionally destroy the country? I, I don't think so. It's just incompetence. They said they want to take us down a few pegs. Sierra Code, what do you think about the Orthodox Church reuniting with Roman Catholic? What would it take? Um, the It would take the Roman Catholic Church because it's already admitted via uh, the Alexandria statement that it teaches differently than it used to. And that, in other words, Alexandria contradicts Vatican I. So the reunion has to be on Orthodox terms. There's no future Ortho-Roman ortho Catholic blended church. <clears throat> That's the purpose of ecumenism. JC, $10 with a question mark. What's the question mark, bro? But thank you for that $10. Changing images of man, $5. Jay, did you forget about me? Uh, no, we just talked about you as a document uh, in because of the CIA book. Because the CIA book, it doesn't mention changing images of man, but it talks about uh, in the CIA's religious approach, um, becoming enamored with Joseph Campbell, 
uh, changing images of man, uh, Carl Jung style archetypal uh, interpretations of religion, which are much more amenable to the CIA's use of religion and ecumenism, that all religions are basically the same, which by the way, is a quote from multiple OSS CIA people, including Carl Jung, Agent 488. And uh, that was all detailed in this book. And in the part two, in greater detail, by the way, one little nugget from that book, if you're interested in part two. So it turns out in the Vietnam period, there was this figure that they created, another created figure, celebrity created, admitted in the book. This is not a conspiracy book. It's a mainline history book. The figure of Tom Dooley. Tom Dooley was a CIA uh, war hero operative during Vietnam, and he was chosen because he was a uh, they viewed him as like the archetypal American um, he was a, a, a Catholic American, and so he was a, a symbol of getting religion involved in the Vietnam War so that people would support Catholics in Vietnam being persecuted. So he wrote a book called Deliver Us From Evil, became a huge mega hit. <clears throat> and it turns out uh, as a trad cat, uh, well, actually, he was more of an American said he was a trad cat, but he was part of this symbolic period when they really, really wanted to turn... Uh, pre-Vatican II, the Roman Catholic Church into an Americanist soft power institution, Tom Dooley was the most famous man in the world. In fact, he was rated above uh, the Pope at the time and the president. Like, he was like the dude. And he was a completely CIA-created star, and the stories of the Viet Cong torture in his book were fake. They were just made up, CIA propaganda. That's all in this mainline book. You can't even find Tom Dooley. Like, he's supposed to be like the most famous dude of the... Anyway, uh, guess what? He was like poof daddy. He was compromised. And that's in the mainline book. So he was a Skittles man. How come he's a is, is he the same guy in the Kinks and Trio? I don't even know. They didn't mention anything about No, that's not him. Oh, there's a person who's a legend of the of of ancient or of American Civil War, so maybe maybe that's they thought that name would evoke. I don't know, but I don't know why he doesn't come up on YouTube. Let's see. Anyway, this guy was promoted by a CIA publishing house, which also published, interestingly, Thomas Merton and Flannery O'Connor. And this publisher was located in Italy, but it was a CIA front. <laughs> I mean, they really published books, but uh, this guy here we go, Legend of Tom Dooley. Here's a freaking. No, this is the different Tom Dooley. All right, this is getting confusing now. No, I don't want movie. Okay, so Thomas Anthony Dooley the third, this guy. This is him. And he was the uh, like most famous dude of this time. Dr. Tom Dooley. This is him. So after his uh, CIA stuff, he went on to be a doctor in uh, Cambodia. That was his CIA stuff. To some, he was a saint. To others, an extraordinary doctor with a cult. Oh, and uh, yeah, speaking of, the Roman Catholics tried to canonize him. 
So there was a long push for his canonization. Oops, uh, found out he skittles. Full personality on an extraordinary mission in life. To others, he was a shameless self-promoter, a product of an emerging electronic medium. He certainly was a legend in his own time. Well, here to take care of people who are sick primarily. Uh, no. So he's there as a, a CIA operative. And um, he was a compromised Skittles man. And there's a whole chapter on him in the Graziano book. So, unfortunately, they just wanted basically to garner Catholic support and Christian support uh, for the Vietnam War. They picked this guy as their symbol. And that's exactly what he did. And he was compromised. So, Anyway, changing image of the man, there's your answer there. And uh, I do intend eventually to, I was actually waiting to try to find an actual hard copy of changing image of the man. Cause you guys know what we do on this channel is we lecture through the actual books and writings of the elite. And uh, that's our uh, global elite lecture series. We've done 50, 60 of those. We will continue to do those because they're uh, very enlightening. It's some of the material that I really love to cover. I think next up we'll do, uh, I mean, this counts in that vein of right of espionage elite studies, the Graziano book. We're going to do uh, Through the Looking Glass. Uh, we'll finish up uh, Whitney Webb, uh, Blackmail book, part two. That fits into that topic. And we'll probably do Noah Yuval Harari's Homo Deus. I think that might be the next global elite text that we do. Uh, anyway, look for uh, me and Tristan to do a live stream. Our uh, Wicker Man show, everybody thought that was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun. I thought it was one of our funniest shows. If you haven't seen our breakdown of Wicker Man and the new Wicker Man uh, with Nicolas Cage, and it ends up being really funny because I end up in a debate with Tristan uh, trying to convince him that the Nicolas Cage Wicker Man is actually not terrible. And so I try to defend this thesis. I think I defend it. A very convincing way and that's over on uh, Tristan's channel so look for that coming up soon or uh, I mean look for that on his channel right here Wicker Man Neo-Pagan Revival Burning Man the myth of the old gods one of the great challenges in this world is knowing enough about us we had a lot of fun on that interview and then look for us to break down true detective Season one. Now that's interesting because I haven't actually revisited season one. If you guys don't know, that was like one of the first podcasts I ever uploaded. And I didn't know what I was doing. The sound was terrible. The sound is still terrible. <laughs> so here we are, I don't know how many years later, 10 years later, uh, and I still haven't figured out all of the technicals of this here podcast and stuff. So we did do a breakdown. However, it needs to be updated i have not covered one of the most revealing aspects of television and art to come out in uh, maybe even the last 20 years true detective season one and i'm sure it will be full of matthew mcconaughey impressions um i've never ever failed to do matthew mcconaughey impressions so here is true detective season one and two in one of my first uploads let's see this was Almost nine years ago. Eight and a half, almost nine. Early, early phases. Wasn't even doing videos yet. Uh, so old school. But it's going to be interesting when Tristan and I, because Tristan hasn't seen it. So a lot of you guys have seen it. Of course, everybody's seen season one. Super esoteric, occultic, dark stuff. Uh, but really good, really good series. Season two, everyone hates season two. Uh, now, actually, uh, more people have warmed up to it. Um, I'm a, I've always been a defender of season two. Vince Vaughn is great as a kind of Tony Soprano villain. Uh, season two is basically about Bohemian Grove and California corruption. Uh, I don't know why people hate it, but for whatever reason, people hate it. I thought it was good. And uh, we'll cover that eventually down the road. But look for us to cover uh, True Detective pretty soon and more of the Diddy stuff. Guys, if you would hit like and share, thank you so much. And uh, I will see you very soon. Don't forget to go to our Eventbrite link and get tickets to our LA event, March 15th, basically a week from now. Friday night, it's going to be a party. It's going to be lit. 